Hello and welcome to Extra Connections. I'm James Lodge, Jr. here of JLJ Media. And I like bringing you people, places, things, and ideas. And this is a person who's been on the show before. It's been a while. And I'm always happy to have him back. Um, he has a gap in his teeth like I do. And he has the same first name as I do. What? I, 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 I love it. It's like it works. But he has a new comedy that's coming out. Uh, horror, well, comedy horror film, which I love. Those are the best kind. Uh, called Renfield, which I saw the commercials for it, actually. Uh, looks good for it. It comes out April 13th. Uh, but also, he started some series. He's done some things. We want to catch up with him, too, and see what he's been up to through this strange time period. Uh, <laughs> help me welcome my friend, James Moses Black. Hi, James. Hey, James. JL. Hey, James. <laughs> I hit the lottery. <laughs> he did. <laughs> it's very good to see you, my friend. Good very to good see you, man. Absolutely. Uh, so, First of all, just how have you been? I just want to get just get that. Let's get that going. Man, I I actually just got back from St. Martin uh, on a oh. cruise, which I'll never do again. It was seven days. Uh, in between days, I wanted to jump ship, literally. Uh, uh, you know, because you know all you see is blue water. You know, and then <laughs> the whole analysis starts. You got this forty ton vehicle floating. <laughs> if I jump over the side, I'm going straight to the bottom. So uh, it was it was good, though, man. It was good to get away, man, and uh, just get to the, that part of the world that I've I've never been to. Uh, it was good, man. And so I, with that, I got a little darker, mm, and uh, and it seems like uh, you, you love you it. Know, I love it. They give you the suntan lotion that you ain't supposed to put on, like <laughs> coconut spray. <laughs> so if you put some coconut spray on. What color you gonna be in a minute? The oh, outside of coconut. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, I love it. Well, what was so, oh, well? First of all, what made you go on the cruise in the first place? If you're not a big I, water person, <laughs> man, I just needed, I just needed to get away, man. I I needed to get away. My class, well, I went to HBCU, and they were having a a, a cruise, and like, please come on. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll come on. And then I started thinking, I got to see these people for seven days straight, and that's when the the whole jumping over the side started getting to me, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it was a good vacation man i got to see some islands i never ever seen before so that was great man and like i said just getting away man that was my first vacation since the pandemic and i don't consider like work vacations yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh yeah so that's why I, I did it man yeah no that's i i took a cruise actually my first one was in january oh right but on it, but it was a four-dayer down to mexico Okay. Like, and so that was fine. But there was that one day I was kind of like, like you know, I was kind of like, okay, I can leave now. It's yeah. Back on land. <laughs> I get back on land. But it was only four day. It was only a four day. It was quick. Yeah. It was seven quick. day. I was on the wonder of the seas. Oh, hey. I up, yeah. I woke up a couple nights wandering around the seas. I was like, oh my goodness, get me off this boat. <laughs> you know, it was like, nah, man. No yeah, more seven day cruises. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I did I did a seven day cruise once, but ours was fortunate because every morning we were in different ports. Okay, there were no days at sea. I lucked out, but the ones we have days and days at sea. I wonder how I would do that. That's a little yeah. too much. Yeah, the, well, yeah, that two days, that last two days where we just kept sailing. I, we're not sailing or motoring. Yeah, I was just like I was over it, man. I was like, get me off. I mean, there's only so much you can drink, right? It's right, just, oh, right. Yes, right. So much you can drink. So I tried to drink it all. Yes. And it didn't work, but it's okay. It's okay. I love, I love that. I love that. Um, but you saw the pandemic yourself. I've been asking people this as we're coming kind of out of it, I guess. Right. Uh, for some of us, it was actually a good reset, but also very successful for us. Many of us were working. Um, mm -hmm. I we started this business. I did. I mean, I mean, it was. I almost like to say it was good to me on some level, but it was. How was the pandemic for you as an actor? What was it for you like? Uh, you know, it, it, I worked some. I worked during toward the end of the pandemic, but during the pandemic, I did a bunch of voiceovers. Uh, so that was good, you know, that I could actually do the voiceovers uh, and make some extra money. But, you know, the, t uh, the pandemic was an up and down for a lot of people, man. You know, just uh, the whole, you know, mandatory hibernation uh, was not the best for a lot of people and you can see it now people just don't know how to communicate with each other you know yeah. they still talk to each other like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. like is it charlie brown thing or what bro but uh it's 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 it was weird man it was weird it was weird but i survived uh you know which was good N only i had only one family member um die of covid 
So I guess that was in a nutshell, okay, good. Um, yeah. But you know, it, was, it was just different. It was different. It was difficult. What did you, what did you learn about yourself during the COVID? What was one of the things you learned about yourself? I love to drink. <laughs> I love to drink. That's what it I came out of the pandemic for me. Oh, man, I was drinking wine from 89, scotch from 76, booze from whoever gave it to me. Yeah, I, love it. I love to drink. Yeah. I think you know, I think the one thing I, I, I learned besides that was just, man, how much you know, faith I have in God, man. And, and to, to not rely on my own sort of, uh, my own sort of anxieties, you know, that I can push those off on, not push them off, but ask God to take them up for me because I can't handle it. It's a lot, man. It's a lot when you, when you think you're only relying on yourself and there's some crazy circumstances surrounding what you're doing or what you're going through. And if you don't rely on God, it can be immensely, immensely troublesome. So that's, that's what it is, man. Yeah, I agree. And it was one of those things because this situation was so out of our hands. Mm -hmm. and it was, and for me, what was interesting, I, I, did, I had to face this thing of, it's not that I can't, you can't do the regular route to get jobs. Mm -hmm. That was done. So yeah, it's the only part of the pandemic. It's starting right. to come back now, but like self tapes became a big thing, of course. But mm -hmm. productions were on hold. Like, there's a lot of things that were happening out of our reach that we had to. I had to turn to God too and say, "Okay, guide me through this. Like, what is like what's you know what's happening here? Because you couldn't do the regular route of what you would normally do to book a gig, right? Or get right. an interview or get a job. It was all different, right? You're right. You can start getting really anxiety filled. Oh my god, what am I gonna do? My next job. I'm gonna do blah, blah, blah. But you really that won't help anything because you're at home. So you're stuck at home, anxiety filled. Right. Know? Right, right. Yeah, and it's 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 amazing, man. And, and 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 you know, when I called people, it was like short conversations. You know, we'd have these short conversations because everybody was going through the same thing. So there wasn't much to talk about, you know, after you got past what you do today. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> it wasn't much to talk about, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and 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 the other thing I think I learned is that you you know, for me, Jehovah's a a, a lot. I I just that's who I depend on. But yeah. people have to have someone to talk to, man. It is it is critically important that you have somebody that you trust that you can talk to, you know. Um, and I'm not saying beyond God. I'm saying in addition to right. To, to have someone just to have some conversation with about some of the things you might be going through. Um, because a lot of people committed suicide during that time, man. There was a lot of suicides. I know. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I learned. That's, I know that's pretty deep for our interview, but you know, that's I like what I deep. I like deep. Um, and the thing, the thing is, you know, I mean, again, for those who don't have a, a believe in higher powers or anything, I always thought it must be, must be interesting for you. For me, I know, like I said, for you, I had to I had to go a little higher than me. Yeah. Uh, to help me get through it. And, and, and I feel like he did. So I mean, we're both here. Right. And, and relatively sane. Yeah. You know, <laughs> relatively is a good word. <laughs> relatively. Uh but but seriously, I think that's what it helped me get through it. And and just, you know, because we had to find different ways. Like you said, so one of the ways you said for you was the voice route, which is really big right now. Mm -hmm. So how is that space for you? Do you like it? It's good, man. I, I have I have uh, my wheelhouse of things that I do. You know, I was doing a lot of the ESPN stuff and then I had oh, a wow. big Apple Watch commercial. And then and now I I finally figured out how to do animation after after watching these animated movies, the pets thing. I, I had to watch them because I had to see like how what do they want when they want you to do? It's not a made up voice. It's kind of like your own voice and you're just, you know, amping it up a little bit. But and so I, I think I've got a handle on animation. But I, I man, I, I, I did a lot of the um, ADR stuff. I just finished an ADR for um, uh, Fast and the Furious Ten, which is like doing a movie, like a co-star in a, a small part. You still get residuals. Mm -hmm. I did the George Foreman ADR. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the movie that's out. I did Amsterdam. Yeah. that didn't do well. Uh, and I did another one called Province. Providence is coming out soon, but just ADR work, which is really cool with me, man. I love ADR work. Yeah. 
Yeah, I thought so. I thought somebody else who was doing that too this last couple of years. Yeah, yeah it's like that. there. So that's very cool. Um, but you also okay. So I'm looking at the stuff that's here. But you did do a couple of series, did some movies. So let's talk. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that stuff. So how'd that ball get rolling to where now the pandemic is kind of we were in like the second year of it. Stuff production started coming back into production. Right, like self tapes were a big thing for you know, for auditioning and stuff. And so what was the first thing you kind of, what were the first couple of things you did when you were coming, when you were coming out of there? I did a movie that we shot, or it's a TV show, but it felt like a movie to me. We shot in Toronto, uh, Memorial, something Memorial. Um, and um, we shot in two locations. We shot in Toronto during like coming out of the pandemic. And then we shot the other part in um, New Orleans. Oh, so wow. it was about a doctor who had to make some choices when um, Katrina came and who to, who to save or who was savable in, 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 in the ER versus who was just terminal and it was going to it was ending. And they took him to court over it. And he actually won. He didn't he didn't have to go to jail. But it was it's that movie. Uh, I had to play a Cajun dude. I never got so much for saying three words in my life. That's what I said, bro. <laughs> oh, my face is Louisiana, so I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yes. <laughs> all my New Orleans friends don't get all bent up. I just, it was just, that's how they had it. Yes. But um, it was great. It was a good time, man. It was a good time. Uh, I, I've been to Toronto a couple of times, but this time it was different because, you know, Toronto was still, for the majority, locked down, you yeah. know, certain sections of it. And then when we got to New Orleans, you know, New Orleans is never locked down. They can have, man, they they don't care down there, man. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. We got a, a pandemic? Well, let's drink. <laughs> yes. It's a flood? Well, let's drink. Yeah, that's they, they've been through it down there. So they know. They've been through it down there. They know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, they know what to do down there, man. So, yeah. That's so right. I did that. And then uh, I came back. And I did another show, um, uh, Liza, Liza, I forgot her name. On Liza. Demand, called Liza On Demand. And Liza On Liza Demand. Liza Kochi, yes. That. Liza Kochi, yeah, we did that, which was fun. She was a fun, fun person to work with. Um, and then I did something else, man. We have a couple things. You did, you did a series called S.O.Z. Saldados Ozami. Oh, that was, that. we did that before, the, right before the pandemic. We oh, did wow. that. But that was in Mexico. We did that right before the pandemic. Wow. And and then I did Lansky. I forgot. Lansky, yes. I did. Yes. Uh, and that, I think, I, that was my first touch with uh, COVID-19 because I was flying back and forth and no one knew what was up. So no one had mask on on the plane. And when I got back to L.A., yeah, buddy, I had it. Oh, so you're an early the- person who had it early. Right. Oh. Yeah. And I, I heard from one of my friends, is like, man, whatever you do, don't lay down. Don't lay down. Gargle with salt water to get it out of your throat. Don't let it get down into your chest. Yes. And then I did that, and all I got was like the loss of taste and the sweating. And that's all I got. Wow. Yeah. 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 I got COVID. I got COVID late. I got it last November, so I was almost out of it. And I, I caught yeah. it. Same Boom. thing. I felt it in my throat. Mm-hmm. I kept saying, "James, don't let it get down your lungs." So like, I was like, I did everything I could. I was gargling and gargling. And doing everything I can and sit in a certain way, and I'll do it all. I was like, it did. I luckily be same here. It didn't get my lungs. I yeah. had no problems breathing. Then I kind of started. It was a head cold feeling. That's uh-huh. why that went away a couple of weeks. But it was like, don't let it get down there because I know folks who when it got down there and they're they're still screwed over. Yeah. There, still. Yeah. yeah. But you had, my, you had it early, though. You had I had early. it early, man. I had it early, and I didn't know. And, and then when it all came out, I had it. And uh, But again, because of a friend, he told me, just don't, whatever you do, don't let it get into your chest. Do, do everything you can to get it out of your throat. Kill the germ in your throat. Yeah. And I did it, man. But yeah, it's great. Wow, okay, so I think of that. So, I mean, okay, so you, you have, we'll talk about your latest part, which is a, a horror comedy thing. But I want to go back to, because you do a variety of things. You've also been on This Is Us. You've all, you know, you've done oh, that was the pandemic, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. I'm, saying, I'm just saying, you've done different things. And I don't think I asked you this last time. I'm just really curious. For you, it's not it's not so much do you like doing comedy over horror or whatever, but is there a genre out of all these that you naturally gravitate towards that you just kind of like? Yeah, uh, it's called getting paid. That's the that's the genre I like. Why did I, th- I, I don't really get paid in, that. that's the one I like. 
<laughs> you're like, whatever you do, you'll do it. Whatever you do, you'll do it. Yeah, man. I, I don't, I really don't, man. I, I, uh, it, it's funny when we start talking about Renfield, I don't do horror and I don't, I don't like that crazy stuff, man. Yeah. When we talk, I'll tell you a story, but well, I, it's, that's the one genre I just, I can't get with, man. And like the whole, you know, the uh, exorcist. Nah, bro, I'm good. I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand that one. I mean, too. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I mean, because because you, you could do comedy, you can do drama. I mean, you could do, I mean, it's such fun stuff. But I just always wonder for actors, like if, if there's this one that you kind of like, yeah, I'll do, yeah, I'll do whatever they, you know, the good script's a good script. But like, if you like any certain kind of genre more, or like that, well, I, I think I have an ex. You know, I, I it was one job I had to turn down, and it was about uh, the Selma thing or the bus strike. Oh in Birmingham, but I had to turn it down because something else happened. Uh, but I like, if I was to do something, I would, I like historical stuff. Okay. You know? But I don't want to do like, you know, no more slave stories, emancipation. I don't want to do no more slave stories. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. would do something other than that. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. But yeah, if I, if I had my choice, it would be period pieces and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I, I like to create my, my persona, for a character. I, I don't think I would do like a, you know, somebody asked me to do James Brown or something. I don't think I, I would like to do anything that repeated someone's essence because I, I feel that that's, that's a tough tackle right there, man. You know, um, and you can watch all the footage you want, but they had an essence about them that wasn't visible. And that's the thing that makes you know that that thing very hard. Yeah, know? yeah, because they they were why they were why why a movies being made is because of that essence of what they were in real life. Like that's right. Can you right. can you recreate that or get close you, to it? Right, right. So without without mimicry, like this right. whole right. thing about this, like are you impersonating and mimicking, mimicking. or actually are you catching it? Right, that actor. And I know that must be that must be hard. Yeah, yeah. Hard. Yeah, so that that one I I would probably stay away from. But tell me, so tell me about Renfield because I saw the commercial for it and it was kind of funny, strange. Yeah. So I'm like, so again, a genre you don't really normally do. Yeah. What yeah. about this script that just made you go, okay, I'll do it. Money. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get it. I get it. Quite, but it's funny, man. Chris Chris McKay, who's the director, I said, man, Chris. I don't do like horror and all that, you know, stuff. Yeah. I said, is there a way that I could avoid Dracula? You know what I'm saying? Can we keep the evil over there and like me over here? Because I don't want to mix up with Dracula, man. I, ain't, I don't want to do none of that. Can we can we just do it like that? You know, I felt like the, the rapper name. I felt like little Baby when I got on the set. I was looking around scared. He said, James, you're funny. You know why I'm funny, Chris? Because I'm scared. Because you are funny. So you're, you're funny. <laughs> but it was good, man. It was, a, you know, I a, a really funny cat that I got to experience was um, Ben. Oh, I forgot Ben's name now. I, I forgot his name. But he is uh, Ben Schwartz. Schwartz. Uh, he was funny. Like, and Chris let us go, right? Once he discovered that, you know, this chemistry was there and Aquafina was in there, he just let us go on some stuff, man. And and it just, for one, you had to hold yourself because Ben Schwartz was funny. I'm funny. I know I'm funny. Yeah, so, yeah. But I had to balance being funny and being real. Like, I was the, I was a cop or the captain of this police in, in New Orleans. So... My stuff was like, you know, that deadpan funny. Right. Okay. Got it. Right. Right. So I couldn't be like, Schwartz was just all over the place. And he was so funny with it, man, that it, I caught myself sometimes just trying not to laugh, man, you know. But uh, I, I had a good, good cast. Shorehay from uh, House of Sand and Fog. She was there. Love her. Love her. Yes. Yeah. She, oh, she's, she's fabulous, man. Love I love her. her. Yes. Uh, and Martinez, Adrian Martinez was part of the cast. Like I said, Aquafina, Nicholas Holt. I we worked together on Dark Places, so that was my second time working with Nicholas Holt, and then my uh, second time working with um, Dracula, uh, Nicholas, Nicholas, uh, Nick, Nick, 
Nick uh, Cage. We worked yes. on the Hunter together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he was totally into it, man. You know, he, I thought he was like Bella Lugosi or something. I'm like, bro. I looked at his teeth one time. I was like, I'm going the other way. <laughs> Out, man. Oh, man. I love it. It's like, but you know what I mean? It's like, at least it's something that's got you on your toes. I mean, like, you know, you've been doing this acting thing for a while. So it's like, you know, he's got something different that's on your toes. Right, right. You should move it because I'm sure you have to find also while you are looking for jobs, find jobs at least that are halfway interesting too, because you're gonna be doing them for however long you're doing for. Right, and and that's the thing. It it has to be at this point. It's it's not about money anymore. It's like right. what do I really want to do? You know, right. um, you know, I created a, a POV series that I'm doing that I'm writing that we we shoot on May fifteenth. Oh, good. Yeah, my my nephew is Harrell Holmes, who is Melvin Franklin and Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Ain't Too Proud. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, wow, yeah, okay. Yeah, so he's, playing Nat, he's playing Nat King Cole. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's it's all about what do I want to do? You know what I mean? It's and when I joke and I say money, um, I'm serious. Um, no, but, number one, you know, there's, no, some, <laughs> there's some seriousness in it. Yeah, right, right, but, right, right. However, comma. Right, right, right. So it's uh it's it's fun to see, you know, if I like something, then I'll I'll go for it. If not, man, yeah, whatever. I not really money's not moving the needle as much as it used to. Right. How do you how do you handle auditioning these days? Well, all of it's I don't think someone asked me this question the other day. I don't think we're ever going back to in person auditions. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think it's over. I think they can the the amount the volume of people that they can see now is just yeah. You know, as before, you know, you get a line out the hallway and down this. Now they can just two, three seconds in, they can say yes or no and keep it moving. From so, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what I, I like it though. I like auditioning at home, man. I, it's it's all right with me. I got my whole setup. So okay. So yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I, I agree with you. I think I think that yeah, I think in person is done. You know, some people say they like in person because you're in the room and. You know, you get the energy, but I thought, well, I just think COVID killed it. I think it just it literally <laughs> did, and it's yeah. and it's cheaper. It's just cheaper. It's everything. Right, right. It's definitely cheaper, man, because now you don't have to have all this staff to. You don't have to bring in the direct. They, they can have the film. So, yeah, it's just it's just it's time saving. So, a lot of people were a little out of shape about not going into the room. I was like, man, listen. We all have to evolve, man. So, yeah, just let it go, man. Yeah, well, I totally agree with that. You also did a, a, a crime drama called Black and Blue. Uh, oh. And we, haven't, hear we, haven't, we haven't uh, spoken that long? No, we haven't spoken that long. No, we haven't. Wow, man. That's like Naomi Harris. We all know her, of course, from Moonlighter. Yeah. Like, no, we haven't spoken that long. No. We talk, we've talked online here and there, like, hey, how you doing, man? Like, that could yeah, yeah. happen. But it's an interview. It's been... It's been I was say before pandemic when we actually sat down before. Wow! I know. Wow. It, yeah, been a while. But I want to mention. Yeah. That I love her. I was going to mention and Frank Grillo, of course. I just kind of mentioned how was that experience? Uh, that experience. It, it was good. Another. Well, yeah, I I left New Orleans and then had to go back to New Orleans how to funny. shoot that movie, and uh, everybody was kind of chilled, man. And, you know, we shot it. I think we shot it almost. During Mardi Gras, I want to say oh, we wow. shot that and Renfield during Mardi Gras. Uh, so it, you know, it was it was cool. It was good to be in the city again and see folks. Uh, yeah, I, it, that movie was a little different, man, because you know George Floyd thing was happening. Oh yeah, right. So this was about brutality, and you know, I just happened to be on the side of you know killing people. Uh, so uh, as a cop. So I mean, it, it for me it was it was it was a good experience. You know, I always I always play cops. You know, you do. So how do you feel about that in this kind of era of black men and all? I'm not, I, I say that's a great say. I'm curious about that. How does that feel for you? I try to bring a, unless it's this dude is like pure evil, right? I try to bring a hum, a human side to being a, a a person who enforces the law or tries to be a community liaison. Um, and in that movie, I I had some feelings, but you know the camera was not catching it. 
Um, I had feelings toward Naomi, like, hey, don't listen, I don't want you to get involved. Just chill, just chill. But she didn't chill. So and then we end up chasing Naomi around the, the hood. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know. So, yeah, but I know but I know that it's you know, I come from, I have some law enforcement members in my family who were really good cops. They were good. My stepdad was a good he just passed away a few months ago. He was a good cop. Uh, decorated during 33 years and so I and but a black man you know and I've been on the other side of things in my past the black man and uh -huh. but I try to I always try to walk that line of there are good cops but I always wonder if people who play them especially if you're a black person playing them I always just curious how that's how it is for you guys I mean it's an act yeah. I get it but I always just wonder how it is for you guys yeah some I mean the most recent event with those the the black cops beat that kid up in Memphis I think yeah. I, I was just like traumatized by that one. I was yeah, like, hold up. Yeah. Are we all black? And you know, so yeah, it's um yeah, it's it's one of those things where you hope that you you know you're just not in there being murderous, yeah. you know, and you're just not because I won't do that. I just just won't. I yeah. just won't just kill to kill and I yeah. you know, it's not my thing. Yeah. Well, do you get it? But also playing cops, you have a, an appreciation of what they do, what they have to face a lot of times. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, rhetoric out there that, you know, that that will tell you to, you know, don't do this and don't do this with cops. You ain't got to do this. And I'm like, listen, man, the quickest way for me to get off if I'm not in Florida is just, yeah. you know, look in the car, with, do what you got to do. Yeah. You, you, it's better be legit because I'm gonna drive away. You know, what I mean, in a minute, right. ain't right. nothing here, ain't nothing here. So, and I'm not out there doing crazy, you know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's 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 very cool. I mean, like in the in the last couple of, I would say, like three, I'll say, we'll say three, three, four years, has any person you work with like really surprised you? It could be in a really, good, I, I want to say like in a good way. I want to say something positive. Anybody surprised you? are Like. They were really good, or they were really nice, or they were really telling anybody that you worked with. Oh, okay. Uh, Naomi, do has... I'll do a positive spin. All positive. Okay, cool, cool. Because I had a couple surprises. You yeah, know I know. I was like, like oh. no, I'm gonna pause the positive spin. <laughs> um, yes, I'm sure you've had other. Yeah, you know, yeah. But I mean, the positive, like, somebody goes, yo, wow. Yeah. Really no, surprised. no. Naomi, Naomi Harris was definitely a, a pleasant surprise. Oh, she and, good. You know, because. She probably should have won for uh, what was that night uh, when she Moonlight. played the Moonlight. 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 She was so good, she was probably, so good. Yeah, she probably, and I and I just talked. We we became friends, and then Shohei was a pleasant surprise. Oh, good. She was. Um, she's just delightful, man. And then uh, raspy voice. That yeah, like, she's like she smokes she's like, like seven packs of cigarettes a day or something. I know. See, I love that voice, though. I love it. I was like, oh, girl. <laughs> Oh, yeah, folks, yeah. if you want, she was how Santa Fox. She also was on 24, did a great yep. step in 24. She was on Will and Grace. She, she's a, just a great, just great Iranian actress. She's here in America. I just, I just, I just love her work. So it's kind of cool to hear that she's nice. Yeah. And when I told her, she was surprised when I told her, I said, you know, I know this might be old, but you, I felt like she should have won an award for House of Sand and Fog because she just killed. She was nominated. She was nominated. Yeah, she should have won, man. So she was delighted by just me acknowledging that. So, you know, it's always cool when you when you meet another human being. Not that you meet another star. Right, right. You meet another human being. And I think that's the most pleasant, one of the most pleasant things of, of the work that I do is I get to meet other human beings. I'm not fascinated by other stars, but other humans are, are really interesting to me. And especially actors, because actors, this is this. It's a it's a nomadic, it's a up and down business. It's uh, it's you know, it's not this conventional. There's no kind. There's no kind of thing like you work twenty years, you get a mug, you know, you do yeah. like, like, you know, you know what I mean. Like it's this. Even the world that I'm in, all of this, this whole world of entertainment is right. not normal. Like it's just not really normal. So I always want, that's why I love doing this job. I love talking to you guys and hear just how do you navigate this world? And right. so you're right, when you meet people and you get to know them and you're working with them, it's kind of, that's kind of, that's very cool. Like, how did you get here? And what are you doing to stay here? And what's going on? And like, who are right. you? How's it right. changing you? How is it, how are you evolving with it? I mean, that's kind of fun. Yeah. And when I, uh, when I, it's, it's funny when I met uh, Teddy from, uh, who plays Teddy on Snowfall, you know, it was, you know, that, that thing that you, actors sometimes do when they don't they think somebody's you know yeah hey, hi and i'm not yeah. that fine boy 
Yeah, and it took us like five minutes, and then we realized he realized, and I'm just dude, I'm just another dude who traveled like you traveled. I know places, and we start talking, and it was cool. So you know, it was the human side of him or and us that was was good. It wasn't the actor to actor, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, and you do get hit with that sometimes, you know. So yes, you do. But yeah, I love I love connection. That's why there's so much like, connection. I just I just do I do. I think it's it makes the world go round. All of us, it's you know, we're all connected whether we like it or not. Right. I almost wish the world remember that that. You know, what we do does affect other people. What they do affects us on some level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we need to come together. And I also, now I'll go, into, I'll go even a little, even little micro. Black folks, we need to remember we're all connected and we should be supporting each other, whatever it is we're doing. And yeah. we're holding each other accountable for things. Like just being there, just a support system. I, I just, I, that's what I try to do with all you guys. Like, okay, yes, I will make sure he's on my show. Uh, I'll make sure I shout out this person. I'll make sure I retweet that thing. You know, I, I try my best to do that. I don't. Yeah. And it's refreshing, man, when you can do and people don't give you the Hollywood shuffle, you know. Uh, yeah. It's refreshing, man, because I, I don't I really don't need anything except, you know, just for people to be cool, man. Just you got yours. I got mine. You know, maybe we can get together. But if we don't, it's all right, man. Yeah. It's OK. It's OK. Yeah. You know. We're all out there trying to make it. We're all out there trying to make it. Yeah. One way and I, I agree with that one too. Uh, I don't know. I guess because I guess because I'm getting older, I'm just getting more and more relaxed. I'm, I'm just yeah. like, okay, like, you know, we survived enough. We're here. We're still here. I survived. Yeah. We survived it, so it's kind of cool. Do you have anything coming up? Anything that you can talk about at all coming up, or just have some things? It, no, the Nat King Cole project is what I'm working on right now. Very good. Very uh, good. So we're just try, trying to get situated for that. It's a three day shoot. Okay. It's going to be um, uh, probably like 30 minutes. So it's a short in a sense, um, but it's leading up to 55. Okay. Uh, and there's another story I wanted to tell by Ernest Gaines. Um, that is called A Lesson Before Dying. Okay. Uh, um, that I want to kind of get the rights to and, and, and shoot that. But yeah, that's what's coming up. Just trying to get the, the Nat King Cole project out of the way. Okay, very good. Yeah, the field is is the movie April thirteenth, a few days from now, coming out. Nicholas Cage and my friend James Moses Black. Tell them where they can find you on the social medias if they want to follow you. If you seventy and over, find me on Facebook. I think that's the only option for you. <laughs> if you sixty to seventy, just go to Facebook. It's going to be a lot easier. Uh, he is there. He's there. <laughs> you can find you find him. He's there. If you're 50 and under, and you can operate a phone really well, and not a not a Samsung, yeah. uh, go to uh, Instagram, James Moses Black underscore, and you'll see me there. And now uh, I don't have the typical, you know, site. I got everything on there. I just, you know, it is what it is. So that's where you can find me. I don't do TikTok. Uh, so yeah, Facebook over 70. Instagram under 50. <laughs> oh my God. And Extra Connections is on Facebook and James on Genome everywhere in the world. Thank yeah. you, my friend. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming on. I appreciate you, James Lott. I really do, brother. Thank you.